So is so is this the right replay? Yeah, yeah, it's the right one. So let's round go back two. to that first round. Point. Can you hear me well? Oh, that was a kid. Yeah, yeah, that was a kid round match. One. To the watch that Point. guy right foot on Twitch when it's our first day. Alright. So, I mean, I get that you did that. That was well spaced. Mm -hmm. So, no, no problem right there. You tried to whip punish. No problem right there. I mean, you're close enough for that crotch when you punch, so I like that. <laughs> Even though it whiffed. Alright. So, this guy. Shows you that he jumped early on, okay? As soon as this jumping mm -hmm. happens, you know, it's four seconds in. You got to probably start thinking, okay, let's see how this guy... Oh, he does jump in roundhouse into jump back medium kick. Like, if there's no better indication that this guy's a nut, right there, that was it. Like, that was the moment in your brain where it should have been like, all right, this guy's a nut. I really don't have to press any fierce buttons at all because um, he's going to be jumping at me. And I don't need to take the risk of pressing a fierce button. That was the fireball right there. I mean, that was badly spaced on your end. If this was a better Ryu player and he knew that you were going to try to go for it, that's a whip punish on, on uh, you know, on your end right there. Yeah. Get whip punish right there. So be careful mm -hmm. about that. Make sure your range is good. I, it seems like you already like doing that move. During that entire round, you did mm -hmm. that move a lot, so that tells me that you like that move. And I think I remember maybe in our previous lesson I had said that you, you do space it really well. Um yeah, I've been trying to practice that um, for yeah. the past week and trying to spec correctly. Okay, yeah. I mean, I can see it. Like, he's just he's jumping and speaking nuts. You know, he's not going to play neutral against you. Mm -hmm. There we go. Jump, jump again. Yeah, he's trying. He's trying to get a grab so bad. Right. Like he, he jumped. Well, I mean, it's, that, that's not. That's not the. That's not the, the. The problem is not the grab, at all. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that happens, right, and you're seeing him continue to jump, rather than jumping back, rather than jumping back, you just gotta stay stationary. Bro. Yeah, just anti air. Yeah. And and remember, don't press any heavy normals. Just stick to your lights and your mediums. And when he jumps, anti air him. Like you, you already okay. know he's going to jump, so it just makes the anti air a lot easier. Okay. You know, you don't have to really be t like you have the ground uh, advantage right here. He is closer to the corner. Mm -hmm. You are above that red line. You are now in control of the neutral. Right. So as soon as he wakes up, see how you're like walking back. If you just stayed stationary, look at where his jump in ended. Right. Mm -hmm. See that? Okay. Look at where you were when you... See that? Yeah. That's an anti-air right there. Yep. Yeah. Not only that, but then you jump back. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, after this, sorry. Not that situation. But this one right, there. right there, right? You see where mm -hmm. your uh, left foot is? Yeah. Right of now look at where his, his jump yeah. in lands. Yeah. See? So yeah. that's, that's a free ant here. So now you, you already know. Like, you have the life lead. You don't have to... That's one thing that I want to tell you. Like, I, I can already see. You love that V skill. But if, mm -hmm. if, 
I know that the Ed player is doing it a lot, I'm going to start neutral jumping. And you don't need to take the risk anymore okay. of doing that B-skill. I mean, react to the fireball and then do it. If, if he throws a fireball, then react to it and then do it. Stop just doing it. Okay. Like that. Because you're going to get clipped. That's just autopilot. Yeah. That's a oh, perfect yeah. example of autopilot. Where it's like, you're not even looking at the life bar. You're not looking at the amount of seconds. There's no mm -hmm. point in you to do it right here. And this is a bad spaced one, too. This wasn't going to be, like, at that tip yeah. range. So, multiple things wrong right there. You took the risk when you didn't need to. And you misspaced your the the move that you were trying to do. Which would have put you in a, mm -hmm. in, a <clears throat> in a worse situation than you had hoped. You're just lucky that he didn't do anything about it. Okay, so now reset back to neutral. See, react to the fireball, bam. You don't have to take the risk. You see, like, look, it, as soon as you're standing right here, mm -hmm. that's it. Nothing needs to be done. And then he's going to make the move. Bam, again. Now you have a little bit of ground control. Mm -hmm. Lifely, too. You just gotta chill. See? You just gotta chill. And then look. If you're yeah. just taking a step forward, too, like there's not. You could gain all that ground, too. At least gain one more box. At least gain one more box okay. ahead of you. Re put, put some pressure on him that he's in the corner. Make him want to jump more. Notice when he's jumping a lot is when he's closer to the corner. Yeah. See? Would have been another anti air right there. See? Because you're not giving him any reason yeah. to fear the jump. Mm -hmm. See? Like, look, look, as soon as he's close to the corner, mm -hmm. jump, and then he's still closer to the corner, technically, and then jumps again, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, I'm back in the corner. You see? Yeah. Like, and I notice that when I'm playing other players, yeah. it's just like, okay, well, this guy's a lot easy anti-air. He just keeps jumping, jumping, and then what they'll do is, what I notice when they, when I catch him with the anti-air a lot, they'll stop jumping, but it's like, okay, well, I can't jump. This guy's going to anti-air me every single time. What do I do? And then they just back up in the ground and start firing fireballs. Yeah. And I V-skill them. Yeah. And they're just like, well, crap, now I, I, have, I can't jump. I can't fan projectiles because they have the option and I want to just fall apart to free. Your mic is kind of messing up a little bit. What, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, you're right. That was a good reaction right there. You see, like, you don't, you don't, you just got to wait for him. Every single hit that you've gotten has been pretty much because he took a risk that he didn't need to. Look at that. Like, that's just, he did wake up like Tatsu, bro. Are you serious? With Ryu. He pressed light Tatsu with heavy Tatsu. Like, he's plinking that. I don't, like, I don't even understand. You know? What was the reason for that wake up Tatsu? What was the reason? That you cannot give me one logical, like, reason for that. And then does it again. Yeah. He does a lot of EX yeah. <laughs> stuff and wake up later on in the second. Well, that's round. fine. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. This is, like, prime example of just how nutty players are online, especially around your rank. Just wait. Like, I'm not, look at that, bro. Every wake up, he's gotten hit in the past two wake ups and then does a third wake up. These are the type of players I really like playing against the most because it's like, damn, you're really going to do it again. All right. <laughs> no, I don't have to do anything. It's like the biggest sigh of relief, dude. It's like, I really don't have to do anything. I don't have to use my brain power at all. I could just wait for the next guy who I'm going to play against. <laughs> Yeah, bro. All you gotta do is defense here. There's no offense of anything. No offense from you. No, none. No need. 
Because you're going to get clipped by some random shit like this if you try to be offensive. Yeah. You see? So that random sweep, yeah. you're going to get clipped by random shit like this into whiff sweep into EX fireball. That's a recipe for disaster of you just getting tilted online. He he has 50% stun, 55% stun built up. He has 40 35 percent life right here 30 35 percent life you have 95 percent life there's no risk at all none no needed bam jump uh, even the jump back from you like there's no need players like this you should just be waiting for and seeing how they're willing to take the risk against you like mm -hmm. and then look at that jumping didn't work you did, it again. did it again and you just reacted later you know but if you if you have it in your head like damn this motherfucker is just jumping he hasn't dash thrown you once i mean see right there that was the desperate exdp that you're talking about from earlier yeah mm -hmm. okay bro like you got hit right here and you mashed look as soon as your brain recognized you get the hit see i didn't even see your input before i said that but I could tell that's what a mash EXDP looks like. Yeah. You got hit from a jump in. Why are you mashing EXDP? Mm -hmm. That's panic. Why are you panicking? Do you not see the life bar? Do you not see the amount of meter that he has? What's he going to hit you with? All right, he got you with yeah, a jump in sure. combo. Fine. But now the, the neutrals reset or he's probably going to throw you. Then you retake the neutral. All right, you still have the life lead. Bro, it's just like a playbook. It's like prophecies. I think that was stupid of you, though. Yeah. That was kind of cocky of you. He really did wake up like Nazi. Yeah, I don't, I don't. When I, when I, when I get hit by this stuff, it's like, okay, that was my fault for not for doing that, that it's just like... Why was it your fault? Costume? But why was it your fault? It's my fault because, well, it's my fault because I thought he was going to wake up EX Fireball, but I wasn't paying attention to his meter. So I didn't know that he didn't have any meat. So that was my fault. So, okay, he might wake up Fireball because he's done it before. And then I was thinking, about, okay, he might talk to, but even still, I could just block. Or I could just wait to see what he's going to do. Because he might, nine times, like seven times out of ten, he's going to jump. Or he might do a Tatsu like he just did. Or mm -hmm. he might do a Fireball. I bet it on a fireball, and I lost. And I should have just waited and just blocked. Mm -hmm. Good answer. <laughs> Remember how I said earlier, like, you don't really need to take any type of risk? Remember yeah. when I showed you the example of this? And I said, there's no point because if you try to take a risk, you get clipped by some dumbass shit like this into dumbass shit like this. The type of shit that's going to trigger you. Well, here's a perfect example of that. You taking the risk when you didn't need to. Right here. And not only did you not need to take this risk, but you didn't need to take the risk and your thought process was just wrong. Yeah. Your awareness was just off about the amount of bar that he had. Not only did he not have any bar, but he didn't have any... Like, he's almost that halfway of that bar of that first bar so it's yeah. not even like in that weird range where you think fuck like is he gonna build the meter or not mm -hmm. this is way off so you were way off in your awareness and decision making right there bam here's some dumbass shit that you got hit with because you were the dumbass and you wanted to take a risk a dumbass risk too sorry I just had to say dumbass one more time. I've been watching a lot of that 70s show. <laughs> and then, see, right there, too, like. Why the. No need for this tech throw, bro. Yeah. If he did a media on you, you if he did like a mm -hmm. stand strong, crouch fears, donkey kick or some shit, or DP, that would have hurt you. You have life lead. Don't give him, like, if you, let him throw you seven times in a row before you mm -hmm. try to tech a throw. 
see if he's actually going to do it that many times. Nobody throws seven times in a row. Only Fujimura or whatever the fuck. <laughs> but 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 what I'm saying is like you can afford a lot of throws here. Yeah. And just know that when you quick rise, you have uh, he has to consider: Is my opponent gonna do wake up button? Because if I try to dash throw after my throw, that wake up button is gonna hit me. Mm -hmm. So then he has to play the game of, okay, should I just do a tiny step forward, standing fierce, and possibly crush counter this Ed player? Mm -hmm. But if if it doesn't work, I give up my turn, and there goes the neutral, and the only thing that he ate yeah. was a throw. So maybe it's the right thing for me to do to throw him and then dash throw him a couple of more times because he has a big life lead, so he might be willing to take the throw more. You're also thinking the same thing, but you're like, because I have the life lead... And it's such a big life lead. He probably thinks he's going to get away with a couple of dash throws. Well, not this time. I'm going to wake up jab. You see? Yeah. Their mind game is just... Then you then you turn it into a mind game of a 50-50. Are you going to actually take the throw? The smarter thing for you to do is to be to take the throw. But sometimes you got to, you know, make a ballsy decision. like that uh, I mean this crouch medium punch was kind of far away but mm -hmm. you know just be aware uh, you don't seem to be whiffing a lot of normals so that's a good thing but um, like that's that doesn't seem to be part of your neutral and then look as soon as the neutrals reset like he has to jump bad jump in for me right there. There's nothing to fear. Yeah. Man, I don't understand that throw that you did right there. Like, what's I thought that? he was going to dash. Dash throw. Yeah. Let him, yeah. Da let him dash throw. In the first match, he did that so much. He did? And I was like, oh my god, yeah, this guy just wants to throw. Uh-huh. So okay. Time, okay. Time I understand. I got up, yeah, yeah. So that was based on what he was doing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Good, good. But you know he's not going to be on the ground for a long time. And then that was just a dumbass mistake again. You got lucky this counter hit. Yeah. That would have been the perfect thing that he needed in order for him to gain confidence. Because what is that on block? Uh, the um, his V skill too. I think it's it's negative. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how much it's negative, but I know it's negative, but if you space it correctly... Right, if you um, space it, it becomes yeah, minus two, right? Yeah. With that close, he would have been able to punish you, though. Mm -hmm. Probably with something like, you know, uh, jab, jab, DP, or, you know, I don't know if it's minus enough for him to do stand medium punch. I'm not really too sure, but that was just a bad mistake on your end. You know he's not going to stay on the ground. Look, as soon as I say that. As soon as, uh, literally as soon as I say that. <laughs> then again. You're, you're too in love with that V-Skill, bro. Like, yeah. we get it. It goes through the fireball. There's, And you've hit him with it like four times. But you have 60% life. And he has 5% life. All you have to do is just wait for the risk that he has to take for the risk that he has to take stick to lights and mediums wait for the risk that he has to take you don't understand wait for the risk he has to take like he has to take a risk so you just gotta wait again mashing the xdp because you're panicking so your awareness is off of the situation for you like you need to you need to understand teach your mind Hey, in this situation, you should not be scared. You know? Mm -hmm. In this situation, I understand if you're a little nervous and causes some sort of panic decision. But in this situation, you should not be scared. Uh, you have to teach your mind that. And I do have a question. That would stop the panicking a little bit. You're, okay. And, and your understanding of... What's really happening in the game? Like you should not be panicking right there. So just mash the XDP. Mm -hmm. So understand the game a little bit more. Study okay. the game a little bit I do more. Have a question. Go ahead. 
Yeah, so with frame data, if I'm going to learn frame data for these characters, what process should I go about doing this versus just pulling up the list and just memorizing everybody's one by one? Should I start off on a certain character or should I break it down a little bit? I mean, how? The, my problem is if I'm going to learn frame data, I don't know how I should go about doing that. Like, I think, okay, well, let me just learn everybody. But at the same time, I don't see that as being too constructive because, you know, that might, that, that'll probably make the process a lot longer. So what is the most recommended way for someone to start learning frame data to learn, you know, what's better? All right, let me show you. Fuck the replay. You're not, like, yeah, fuck the replay. Th this is more important. This is going to help you more in... in our con like that replay what am i gonna see that motherfucker just jumping at you for another round or two like it's not gonna really you know you got what you needed from that match just wait <laughs> if he likes to throw you a lot fuck it let him throw you let him throw you it's ryu let him throw you and even with other characters let him throw you yeah, you just really test how well can this like person mix up his offense mm -hmm. because if the if the meta or theory was literally just always take the throw then you mm -hmm. would stop seeing crush counters and you would stop seeing like people get counter hit on wake up right okay but it's not it's deeper than that but Eight times out of ten, you're going to see the really best players take the throw more often than not take the throw. But there is a mind game there. They've studied the situations. Okay, so um, you said frame data. Well, let's just say, let's go with, um, pick, I would say pick one of the top tier characters, right? And who's top tier in this season? All right, Rashid. Rashid. <laughs> A good example of some bullshit. Um, I don't know what V trigger these motherfuckers use. Everything is good. Jesus Christ! I was like, how many machines do I have to play? Here? Yeah. So, when you ask, what character should I start off with? You always start off with the top three best characters in the game. Okay. Okay. Always start off with the three best characters in the game. Um, okay. Give, give me one second. Um. Okay. All right. So the way you go about frame data is you're gonna have to pull it up on your computer or your phone. Pull up the character that you're playing against, mm -hmm. and um. Where is where's the attack data on frame advantage on key display? All right. All right. So I'm just giving you an example here. Okay, I just selected a few normals, right? Mm -hmm. but most of the ones that you'll be seeing. So the way you go about the frame data understanding and, and how you like delve into frame data is just start off like this, where you have the frame data up and you see, okay, this character is plus three on this move. That means that's a really good move because I can't really do anything about it. I don't have a three frame. So if he were to decide to press it two times in a row, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get counter hit. Yeah. Now, how often do sheep players do that? Quite often, right? Yeah. To stop somebody from trying to stop their pressure. And that plus three is really good. So. Let me turn that off. Okay, so once you see that, you have to break down each normal, how plus it is and what the possible follow-ups are of that normal off of that normal on hit okay. and on block so let's just okay. concentrate on standing strong right now okay okay let's go back to standing strong and let's just showcase a little bit more
So, you're going to see some shit like this. Right? <laughs> Usually it's things like that. These are the follow-ups that Rashid is going to most likely do afterwards of that standing mm -hmm. strong. And your job is, what do I do as soon as that first crouching strong is blocked? Uh, to counter most of those options that he has. And then, bam, you got standing strong down packed. Now you know that when you block a standing strong, everything that the Rashid player can do and mm -hmm. everything that you could do to limit you getting hit and to and to quickly place yourself out of a bad situation like out of the 9000 options that Rashid has after a standing medium punch whether it's standing medium punch stand medium punch stand medium punch delay medium punch stand medium punch walk up throw stand medium punch walk up delay medium punch stand medium punch ex stand medium punch crouch medium kick stand medium punch stand jab into dash stand medium punch stand medium punch dash whether all and plus more options that he has from it the jump in, the, the whatever, the random fireball afterwards. Whatever option he has after that medium punch, mm -hmm. know all of them. Know all of them and, and, and start thinking about what would I want to do if I was the Rashid player and I hit somebody with a stand medium punch. And then break that down a little bit more. How much life is left between both him and I and when he pressed that medium punch if he has lower life he most likely might want to continue pressure with some sort of EX whirlwind so you kind of focus okay. on those a little bit more because those are the options that are gonna hurt you the most you see it's all scientific just from that one button you have to think of all the options that he can do you have to think of all the options that he most likely will want to do and try to find your best answers with your character. The reason why a character is top tier is because they have so many tools to put an enemy in that uh, mindset of just like, oh, what am I supposed to do? And they have so many tools to deal with getting pressured. Like they have enough tools to pressure somebody and they have enough tools to deal with the pressure. So like a Rashid against a Rashid, the Rashid player is going to have, let's say, 15 answers to the 20 options. Whereas the Ryu player is going to have six answers to a possible 20 options. And if the Rashid player that he's playing against knows I have 20 options against Ryu after this certain button or this certain frame advantage or disadvantage situation... Mm -hmm. The Ryu player's best options here beat six of my options, but I have 14 more options, tools, to do that would put the Ryu in an uncomfortable uh, state of mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Am I explaining that well? Yes, yes. Okay. Could you repeat what I said, possibly? Yes, so... Or enough if, of it? Yeah, so if Rashid, for example... A crouching and crouching, and you know it's plus, and you know you need to find out what Ox is going to do after. So, for example, if Rashid is low on life, more than likely he's going to want to continue that pressure. You need to find out what options you have after whether he's going to do a crouching, medium, crouching, medium with a tornado, if he's going to do a DX tornado, if he's going to do a delayed, anything like you need to find out what he's going to do and find out what you can do to counterattack that. Yeah, and you need to pay attention to certain aspects, like for example, who has the life lead, who has me. Who doesn't have meter? Does he have V trigger? Things like that. Yes. So it's just paying attention to these small details prevents you from making a mistake. Or for example, for me, if I whiff, if I do EXDP just on panic, well, this guy has full bar, yes. a full meter, full V trigger, it's over. Yes. Because if you panic on the EXDP, now this guy has all the tools in the world with a life lead, you're at 50%, it's done. It's a done deal. Right. So you need to pay attention to these small details. And not get overwhelmed or panic because you know exactly what the situation is. I know, in fact, this Rashid player is low on health. He wants to continue pressure. The ball's in my court. All I have to do is wait and find out exactly. If I know for a fact that I can do, I don't know, an EXDP into a, um, into like my V trigger, and then I can punish him off that and I can kill him or whatever option I have. I just know that I can beat this option once he does this because he's, I know what options he's going to do. I just need to figure out what I can do to beat each option. Yes. And to not be able to panic 
and just do whatever. Just be unfamiliar. I need to be familiar with their move, with the plus, with minus, yes. on hit, and, on, yes. and on block. Yes, yes. Perfect. Perfect. You just... You, you said everything that I said in a better way and in a shorter amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. And that was just the example of standing strong. But that's his best button. Arguably, that's his best button. Next to, like, crouching fierce. Um, but now, l now let's go... You know, another example of crouching fierce. How many times did you block it? Is it the double hitting crouching fierce? Okay. What if he did this? Or what if he does this? Oh, sorry, not that. Whatever. What if he does, uh, what if it's one of those meat crouching fierces? You know, that if he does that, sometimes they'll do that again. Right? Or, you know, that if he does this, uh, uh, uh. or if he does this, you know, then, uh. You know, if he does this, and then he do that, and then, you know, if he does this, and then he just does this, and then, you know, there's just so many options. There's not enough recording slots. I need more recording slots. Yeah, that, that, that's a lot. That's, that's the one where it's like, God, dude. But everything that I showed you is like, you've seen Rashid players do that. Off, her, yeah. off of a crouching pierce because it just leaves them in that perfect position. So your job is to dissect, record all those options and, and figure out what like what is this Rashid player going to want to do after this crouching pierce. Will it hit tip range so he probably feels like he has some footsies so he might want to do another walk up crouching pierce. Maybe it's best for me to jump at him at this time. Yeah. Maybe it's best for me to neutral jump at this time. Maybe it's best for me to just try to quickly walk back a little bit and see if I could whiff punish it because I have an inclination that he's going to do another walk up crouching fierce max range. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. It hit max range. This Rashid player thinks he has footsies, so now he's going to dash up and throw me. You have to see what he is doing and then start creating the thought process in your head that's going to allow you to counter what he is doing. You know, you mm -hmm. could have a theory like I think this Rashid player is nuts. So what he's gonna, what I think he's gonna do after I block a crouching fierce is probably dash up, and then he actually didn't do that. Well, maybe this guy's not as nuts as I thought he is. So now you start adapting to what he is showing you. It's all about adaptability. How how fast can you adapt to you being incorrect in your theory? Mm -hmm. Because not everything that you think about is gonna be really what's happening on on uh, against the opponent. That's why players study players so much because I'm I don't want to have to adapt to you on the on the fly. I want to be ready for all things that you could possibly do because your replays show me that in the past 10 tournaments that you've entered, you really like doing throw on this situation. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do wake up DP in that crucial moment. I'm going to bet it on that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's how you test your frame data. That's how you learn, okay, in this situation, after I block that, it's probably probably good for me to take a tiny step forward. I mean, a tiny step back. Oh, hold on, let's see. And then I take a tiny step. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bam, you know? Right, let, me, let me show you again. Like when it, and then, bam. Right. So now you're oh you're only focusing on that right now. So okay, let's see where it goes. Bam, and then all right. So you're only focusing on that. You try to set it up as best as you can. Sometimes you're gonna fuck up, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But as soon as you can set it up, now you're like, all right, he's gonna or whatever punish is better for you, a sicker punish, you know? Whatever the I don't know what the fuck this character can do. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Bro, what the hell? No, fucking yeah. controller stopped working for a second. That was weird. Okay. So yeah, that's... Uh, do you understand now? Yeah, yeah. And that then... Complete that. And that was just on offense, by the way. <laughs> that was just on offense. What about all this? <laughs> What about all this? This. This. Or. Or. 
you know? <laughs> All that. Your offense, his offense, the neutral, the max distance button presses, the jump ins, the deep jump ins, the throw. See? Everything. Yeah. Everything. The this activation against this activation. You know? See, with that activation, you gotta take a tiny step forward. To throw. But in this activation, right there. In this activation, you gotta walk up to medium punch deep. Whereas in this activation, right next to him. Everything. You gotta study all of that data. All those numbers like a fucking matrix going on in your head. And and remember, when I showed you the stand medium punch thing for Rashid or the crouch fierce, just with those two yeah. buttons alone, just with those two buttons alone, I would say that, what, Rashid has maybe, what, like 20 options off of those? Yeah. Like 15 options. I'm just going, I'm being a little dramatic, but many options, right? And now you got to take into consideration of the jabs. What if he does one jab into throw? Or what if he does two jabs into walk up throw? What if he does two jabs into weight? What if he does two jabs into medium punch? You see? Mm -hmm. What if he does one jab into medium punch? He didn't do two jabs. He did one jab this time. There's so many options that you have to, like, consider. And you don't want to have to consider it while you're playing in rank match or while you're playing in tournament. You don't want to ever have to consider it. Like, that should just be muscle memory. Okay, bam, he did this, this. I'm, gonna, I'm ready for whatever he's going to do right afterwards. Mm -hmm. As soon as he did this, I'm a back dash. Now I'm at a throw range. Oh, as soon as he did this, I did backdash, but he randomly uh, hit me and I air flipped out. I'm ready for that too. I'm at EXDP because I know you're going to want to do something, you know? I don't mm -hmm. know. Just You just know the options. Just know all your options. Yeah. And that goes for every single character. But start off with the top five, top three, top five, and then work your way down to the, to the characters that you're not going to see as much in tournament. Does, okay. does that explain well for you? Yes, yeah, that's that's perfect. Okay. Um And that's just like a general quick rundown as best as I could explain it. Mhm. Mm and provide examples. <laughs> um What I am going to do since we have 3 minutes left is go back to that replay. And just watch that second round where he wins. And just show you that the only reason why you would lose that round is because you weren't patient. And you probably took a lot of risks. Because mm -hmm. that first round, all he did was jump, right? Yeah. So I think in my head, he's going to jump a lot in the second round. Either he's going to jump a lot in the second round, or is that, or that he's going to dash a lot in the second round. Because he thinks he's giving you some sort of meta. So let's just fast forward through all Round that. Round one. Fight. Round two. I'm watching it fast pace too. The first time you get hit, jump in. Jump, jump, jump. Hell yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. Look at that, bro. <laughs> and keep in mind, though. Did I watch the second round when we first started going over it? Mm -mm. And then, what? What did I say? He's going to jump a lot. Yeah. <laughs> The jump, 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 jump. Hell yeah. Final round. Fight. But like, look, bro, I'm just going in fast pace, but all, all you can see while I'm going fast pace is how much he's just chasing you. Look. Like, I'm going in fast pace, and it's just him running after me. 
<laughs> so you see that little bit? Yeah. Look, he just keeps coming to you. I know that was hella fast, but now you could, whenever you play ranked match, you're going to be like, oh shit, I actually have more time than I thought. See, the problem is in your head, that's how fast the match is going when mm -hmm. you play it, right? It feels like yeah. that. But when you now slow it down a bit and you watch the, the match in real speed, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Actually, I have more time. So that's actually a, a good strategy too. Go watch a replay in super, super fast mode and uh, mm -hmm. super fast speed. And then go play a ranked match and just see how much slower like the game actually is moving than what you think it is. That okay. super, super fast pace, that's what's happening in your mind as shit's happening in the game. But in reality, the game is moving at a much slower pace and you could dissect situations better than you thought you could.